Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and uh, I'm going to have a quick look at printing greetings cards on the Epson XP15000. Now, I've done a detailed review of this printer which has got a lot more details of the features and the software and things like this. But this is specifically looking at printing greeting cards because I often get asked questions about people with problems printing cards, printing odd sized paper on printers like this. First of all, you should realise that not all printers can handle all sizes of card. Um, it's unfortunately it's usually buried away in the specification somewhere as to what the sizes are. Now this particular card, and I'll uh, show why I'm using this one in a moment, is uh, 147mm by 297mm. Now that's the length of A4, so it's, it's you'd think, well, is this a supported size? It's not a standard supported size, but you can set custom paper sizes. Now, depending on the printer you're using, the range of custom sizes can vary. The other thing to notice is that some paper sizes, if they're supported, may allow borderless printing, whereas this one, where I've set up a custom size, this is using the Epson print layout software, free software, very useful for normal printing, can be used for cards as well. Now I've set up a custom paper size here and uh, 147 by 297. I've loaded some card at the back here. I'm going to use a straight through print path here. So in here, out here. I've also specified a user defined paper size on the settings here. When I put the card in here, it asked me for the type. Now, this card is quite tricky to print on. And the reason I've got this particular one is because this is a relatively cheap card. Somebody sent me this after they were having print problems and uh, we'll see how it prints. They were not using this particular printer, but uh, we'll see how this card prints on this particular printer. There we go. The printer's connected up wirelessly. It'll take a moment. It's running off a relatively oldish laptop. Um, I've just got this screen here set so it's a bit easier to show on the video. I'll obviously do cuts of any important things. But bear in mind, every paper size you pick, you'll need to specify something a little bit different. One thing I would say is if you've not used the printer for a while, and this one I hadn't used for perhaps a week or two, is run off a printer test image first, uh, or sorry, a nozzle check. This is uh, from the front there. Shows that there's no problems. Um, it takes part of a sheet of A4 paper. There's some loaded in the base here. And that's all it needed. Um, I know the printer's okay. And if the print doesn't come out right, there's something else wrong. But uh, if you've not used the printer for more than a few days, run a nozzle check like this, uses very little ink, and you can use the paper again for a nozzle check. You just turn it over and then you can use the other end. So you can get four nozzle checks on a sheet of paper. And then if you're feeling really tight, you can get a guillotine, chop the bits off and redo it. Um, but I'm just gonna run this print. Now, I've had a slight misfeed on this and I had to apply a very gentle bit of pressure to the top of the print here to get it to take up. You do find that sometimes with card, um, the printer mechanism can be a little bit hesitant in grabbing it. Don't push it in, just slight bit of finger pressure on it. You'll feel the uh, print mechanism grabbing at it. Just give it a little hint. Um, it doesn't always happen, it varies with media. Um, doesn't cause any problems. If it does, just means you have to go through the process again. But uh, here we are, it's printing this image quite quickly. This is printing using the plain paper setting. Now, these cards, they come pre-creased, so you know which side to use. If you're ever unsure with a photo paper, just lightly moisten your finger, 
touch the corner and you'll feel a slight tackiness on one side compared to the other. Most photo papers are only coated one side. That means you'll only be able to get the best quality printing on the photo side. This one isn't tacky on either side. This is just plain cardboard. And there's the print. Well, it's not really awful. Um, if that was a greeting card that I'd made, I certainly wouldn't send it to anyone. Um, this card really isn't up to printing with inkjet printers. And there is your major problem. Um, it's, this, this card, I believe, was something like five pounds for a pack of 50 sheets with envelopes. Um, that's cheap. This card, if you look on the website where it's sold, nowhere in the description of it does it use the word printing. Um, it may well take uh, text on the laser printer but even then you may have problems because the toner may not properly adhere to the card. Um, this card is designed for cutouts, collages, all kinds of things. It is not designed for printing photos um, and you can change. I've used plain paper setting here. You can change the settings. Um, I've even used an ICC profile automatically checked for this. Um, you can change these settings as much as you like. You are never going to get a high quality printout from something like this. So, how to get around it? Well, um, I've got quite a few of these. These are ready-made uh, greeting cards, blank greeting cards. This is from a, a local company um, here in Leicester in the UK. Um, other stuff like this will be, be available, but this is just a, a local company and I, I test some new stuff for them every so often, so I've got a few of these. This particular one is an etching card. It's um, double A5, so it's A5, A5. That's not supported borderless on most printers. And uh, here is one that is supported borderless because it's A4 folded down the middle to give double A5 that way. Um, so this one you could print borderless on quite a few of the printers I've tried of late. This one you can't print borderless. You'll need to check the print specifications of what the minimum border size is. But these are actually made for printing. So I'll just get rid of that. There's the actual image. It's a test image uh, I've created. It's available for free for download. And um, what I would always suggest is use an image like this for testing a new card and perfecting printing rather than one of your own images with graphics, pictures, wild, or whatever you want to print. If you can't print this particular test image, then what hope have you got for printing your own images? Very little. Um, so this is now open. This is open in Photoshop. You could use something like um, Affinity Photo uh, for it, but you do need a, a, you know, an editing package of some sort. Now I'm doing this on a Mac. There are PC options. There's also software that's designed specifically for printing cards. That can take care of borders and the like, but I'm looking at just the uh, 15,000 here. Here's size for this one. This is 148 by 420. I've used the, uh, set the print resolution at 600 pixels per inch, um, rather higher than the 300 you might normally use for printing, purely as a test of how fine detail. And in this image, there is a lot of fine detail. So if you're printing photos, for example, and you want to maintain the detail, use high resolution image, test image like this, and this will give you a, uh, a feel for it. Now this image, it has got uh, guides on it, and it is part of uh, a set of different size templates I've made. Now these Photoshop PSD files, uh, they have margins set in them, so you can just drop pictures. They also cover the problem you can get where if you're printing, you ideally want your image to go slightly over the fold, so when it's folded, you don't get a white line down the side of the card. 
but that's uh, for that. But anyway, let's just print on this other, this etching, this is etching 310 gram uh, greeting art, so it's a fine art paper. Um, you can use uh, profiles or settings for something like um, an art paper, cotton rag, uh, a fine art paper of some sort. But anyway, I'll just configure this and then we'll print that one. Now I've uh, taken the image here, gone to print. Uh, in terms of settings, uh, I've had to set a different custom page size here on the printer. I've created a custom page size here. As I've got lots more about this, if you're not used to printing, setting up page sizes, have a look at the detailed review I've written. Uh, there's a video as well, but the written reviews are always where the details are about how to set things up like this. But here we are, this is the Photoshop print dialog. I'm going to just print this image here, it's just a test image, and uh, there we go. There's a warning that the image is larger than the printable area. That's because of the borders uh, that we've got set. Doesn't really matter for a test image like this. But what I would say is if you're unsure of settings, always practice on some sheets of plain paper first. It's far cheaper to practice on sheets of plain paper than it is all your nice expensive card. Just a quick check there to see I've got this the right way round, and it is. There's a distinct tackiness on this side compared to that side, so we're okay. I print this. Once again, we may get a slight problem with, uh, the, with the feed, but uh, that's perfectly normal. There we go, another slight problem with the feed. You tend to get that with narrower sheets. I've printed a lot when testing this on A3, A3+, plus, so 13 inch by 19 inch prints. Never a problem with it. Varies with card, probably varies with weather, but um, just be wary of it. It's not a problem, just a slight touch on the top there is all it should take. And in case you were wondering, no, you can't just load the sheet feeder at the bottom with uh, sheets and expect it to print that way. These thicker card sheets, they have to go at the back. That means there's no double-sided printing. If, unless, of course, you take the card out, run it through. Of course, if I take this card out, because it's only coated on one side, the image on the other side is going to be this quality. Now, for some text, that may do. Um, this text is a little on the light side, uh, certainly not for printed graphics on the inside. Now, immediately, I can see on the text here, it's much darker, it's much crisper than this example on the plain card. Um, it's about the quality of the card. Um, if you want high quality images, you need high quality materials to work on. Uh, this may look great with cutouts stuck to it and other um, ways of making cards. For printing pictures, it's hopeless. There we are. Um, I'm hoping even on the video here the difference is quite clear. Um, that is an image quality I'd be happy to send to somebody. That, well, cut it up and use it as a bookmark, but not much more. So there we go. That's, as I say, that's pre-folded. Um, but this is using a matte art paper. And if you just look at the difference in density between the blacks you're getting there. Um, now, hopefully that'll show. But there you have it. Um, it. Printing these cards, not difficult. You need to be careful about the paper feed. You need to be very careful about the paper type. The print settings, uh, you print them much like you would photos. Uh, there's not much to it other than that. So um, have fun sending cards to people. Thanks very much. But... So if you find stuff like this interesting, please do subscribe to the channel um, and also uh, ask questions if you've got any. I, if it hadn't been for somebody asking questions about printing on another printer, I wouldn't have this stock of gloriously useless card to print on. It's a very nice looking white card, but from a print point of view, it is useless. So there we go. 
Thanks very much.